appreciate any clergy present. I don't recognize the sea as the host is full, and I'm blessed. And thank God for that. And of course, I welcome our, our guest preacher this afternoon, the Honorable Reverend, oh my goodness, Donnie Thurman Jr. from North Carolina. Welcome. I don't know if you know me first time visitors. Um, I'm not going to ask you to stand, but I'm going to say a special welcome to you. Thank you for supporting us in the provincial BYF. Thank you, New Horizons members, and uh, for always showing up and supporting. And from visiting churches, I see from our, our, our what is it, family of churches of the AUEA visiting with us, and we thank you for your presence. Deacon David Prevost, an avid supporter of our provincial Baptist youth, a moderator, welcome. And to all of you, welcome. Now, here's what I expect. I hope that you came expecting. I hope you came expecting, and I hope you came expecting a blessing and to be a blessing as we ourselves give a generous outpouring of ourselves to God who is worthy. And I believe that the Provincial Baptist Youth already gave a generous outpouring of themselves. Bless God. Now let's praise the Lord today in earnest.
Yesterday, it was just a little notch higher. This morning, we certainly did hear a word from Le Sentient Darian David this morning. And I'm praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to captivate our mind this afternoon in that of our guests who we had the awesome privilege of meeting seven years ago. Am I right? There are several of us in the room that actually was on that trip. Could you please stand? The North Carolina exchange trip We all, we all had the opportunity to, to go down to North Carolina and do a whole week of ministry. A whole week of ministry. And we wasn't down there to play, but we was down there to do ministry. And I believe it was on a Friday night that Pastor Donnie captivated our youth And as you can see, Pastor, they never forgot about you and the word that you left and touched them with. So here you are after three years with them today. So, but on behalf of the African United Baptist Association, I do bring greetings to our youth, to Sister Micah and the executive um, for a job well done this weekend. I must say that one yesterday, as I attended their business session, in the president report, I do want to echo her words as your moderator. We are in a state of emergency with our youth. I'm not going to say be thankful for what we got, because we know we can do much, much better. And to you young people, I know there are several of us in this room today that grew up and came up in this youth ministry. And I stand here as a witness that I am who I am because of this Provincial Baptist Youth Fellowship. Every leadership tool that I've incurred, that I've gotten on along, has been through this youth ministry. God can do anything when you put your mind on him. So at this time, I'm going to take the opportunity to, to present to you this afternoon the 2023 to 2025 officers for the Provincial Baptist Youth Fellowship. Yesterday, our list looked bleak. But we serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. So as I call your name forward, I ask that you come to the front and face the congregation. President of Provincial Baptist Youth Fellowship for the 2023 to 2025, Brother Kyle Frazier. <laughs> Vice President. Sister Asia Smith. <laughs> Secretary, Sister Ruth Raleigh. <laughs> Q 
Can we all save our applause until the end? <laughs> Assistant Secretary, Sister Haley Smith. <laughs> Treasurer, Sister Kayla Smith. Assisted by the former Treasurer, Sister Ariana Desmond, for the next three months. <laughs> Assistant Treasurer, Brother Zykeen Provo, District Number One Rep Makalani McDonald, District Two Shaida Oliver, District Three, District Four is vacant. Our events coordinator is Sister Talia Downey Gillis. Gillies. With also member Chanel Gordon, Gordon, Jordan, along with our PATH president, Sister Micah Smith. This is your 2023-2025 Provincial Baptist Youth Executive. chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I be beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In all ages, God has been calling men and women of faith to step out and assume position of special responsibilities in the church and in the world. The Provincial Baptist Youth Fellowship of the AUBA is one of those responsibilities. It is as great a task as any can offer. To you, I extend the words of Christ himself, who said, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should endure. Similarly, I issue to you the charge of the Apostle Paul. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who needs not be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. You have the privilege of sharing God's work. It is important that you be conscious of the tool at your disposal, the, the resources of wisdom and the power which God provides and the church, and the church community which offer its support. I remind you of the importance of scripture and prayer. These are the key to your Christian life and to the task you now undertake. Never forget that the ministry in which you share is vital and the lives it will touch are precious in the sight of God. With the assurance of God's presence and the support of this faith community, I commission you to the office of the Provincial Baptist Youth Fellowship of Nova Scotia. The word Paul used in commissioning Timothy, I now use in commissioning you. Keep your eyes open. Hold tight to your conviction. Give it all you have got. Be resolute and love without stopping. As found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 16, verse 13, 14. As I am um, read, could you respond by we do with the Lord being our helper? Do you now accept your task as a sacred and solemn trust from the Lord Jesus Christ 
And do you promise to fulfill your responsibilities and ministry to the best of to the best of your abilities? Will you seek to be faithful, example of new life in Jesus Christ, and to take the witness of his of this church, his church, more effectively in the world? Congregation, Ma, do you, the members of this organization, congregation, acknowledge and receive these leaders and promise to enter with them into the spirit of the vow they have just made to God? Do you promise to encourage them? Do you promise to support them? Do you promise to labor with them? And do you promise to pray for them? with the Lord as your helper. If so, will you please stand with them for a prayer of dedication? Our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, we approach you as a people whom you have called, a people you have gifted and commissioned, you have invited us to share in the task of reaching the world with the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that these youth have decided to continue to allow themselves to be used by you in this ministry. We thank you for each and every one. Lord, we ask you to put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Father God, help them to know and to realize that they have so much support around them, Lord. Lord, be with them, guide them, and direct them. May everything that they do, Lord, be pleasing and acceptable to thee. For you are your, their strength and their redeemer. Lord, I also echo that you will also hold us accountable when they're not doing their job. Allow each and every one of us, Lord, to be stand beside them, Lord, and to build them up, Lord. Lord, we know that the we know that the enemy is running around like a roaring lion, waiting to devour our youth, Lord. Waiting to just snatch them from what you have called them to do, Lord. Help us to be their biggest supporter. Lord, help us to be their biggest prayer warriors, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be there when they need our help and our assistance and our guidance. Lord, use us, Lord, also to help them, Lord, as they go through this journey, Lord. We thank you for each and every one. And we praise you for them, Lord. Because it's in your name, in your name and your name alone, that we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the calling that you have placed on their life. Use them for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of above all names, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. The name that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. May God be with you.
for the blessing that they're going to pass on to us as the young people, whether it be in guidance and money, dear Lord, any guidance that you will send our way, we will take, dear Lord. I ask and pray that you would be with these lovely people as they continue through their week. Give them as many blessings as you can, be it again in weather in any form, dear Lord. We will take anything you send us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
final prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're coming to your house today, Lord. Asking you, Lord, to bless each and every one of us. Asking you, Lord, to put your loving arms around each and every one of us. Father God in heaven, we love you and we, we honor you and we worship you. And we thank you, God, for this day that you've allowed us to see one more time. Father God in heaven, you've been good to us. And for that, we can say thank you, Lord. Father God in heaven, thank you for the Baptist Youth Fellowship, Lord, for 88 years. What a blessing, what a legacy that was left to them, Lord. After so many years, Lord, of our forefathers and mothers, Lord, struggling, Lord, along the way. But Father God in heaven, this is their time, and it's their time to shine. And for that, Father God, in heaven, we allow we ask you, Lord, to give them the strength, give them the fortitude, Lord, and give them that, 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 that honor, Lord, to go through. But Lord, they're young people. They can do this work, Lord. They stood before you this afternoon, Lord, uh, committed to do the work. And for that, God, we say thank you, God, for their young lives. We ask you, Lord, to bless each and every one of them, their families, God, put down upon them as they go through life. The struggle is real, Lord, for each and every one of them, Lord, but we know that if they put their hand in your hand, Lord, the task is easy, because, Father God, they're, home, they're asking you, Lord, to bless them and guide them, Lord, in through their lives, Lord, through their schoolwork, Lord, through their jobs, and through everything that they possibly can do. Father God, they're with their families at this particular time. Father God, I ask you to bless the, the minister that's going to come forth, Lord. I'm Reverend Thurman at this time, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to take him down to the scriptures, Lord, and let him, Lord, just preach the word of the gospel according to your heart, Lord. Father God in heaven, we want a blessing this afternoon, Lord. We claim to bless others, Lord, and we want a blessing, Lord. Father, bless him and bless him and bless us, Lord. Send your sweet Holy Spirit into this church, Lord, this afternoon. Father God, for many here, Lord, a lot of us have needs, wants, and desires, Lord. We just ask you, God, to touch each and every one of them. Father God, Father God, you have me ask you to visit those who are sick and afflicted, those who are, Lord, who cannot be here at this time. We know, Lord, we have death among us, Lord. We have lost loved ones this weekend. And Father God, we ask you to comfort the comforting families, Lord, at this time. Lord, we love you. We need you, God. Please take control, Lord. We live in a world, Lord, that's toxic and turvy, Lord, is falling apart. But Father God, in heaven, we know that. And we put our faith and strength in you, Lord. You can do all things but fail. And for that, God, we can say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, Lord. All we have to do, Lord, is just go to you. Fall on our knees, Lord, and say, Lord, bless us. Guide us and strengthen us. And give us that strength, Lord, to get up, Lord, and to do what it is that you will have us to do. Lord, we don't want to run before you, because if we run before you, we're going to get knocked down. But if we run with you, Lord, you're going to carry us through. Father God, continue to bless the Lord. Bless this service, Lord. Father God, I, I pray for all that have gathered here this afternoon. Father God, I especially pray for our young people, that this Baptist Youth Fellowship will carry on, Lord, and that they'll be able to bless other young people and bring them back to the fall. I remember the days, Lord, when the Baptist Youth Fellowship, why, my, 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 what a crowd, what a crowd, Lord. And Father God, we know times have changed, but Lord, you haven't changed. And we're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And you can do all things, God, I tell you. And Father God, we're asking you, Lord, we're asking you, Lord, this afternoon, to be with all, to be with all these young people that are behind me and that are in front of me, God. Use them, Lord, use them. Because, Father God, if they put their faith and their trust in you, you will do a marvelous work within them. You're an awesome God. You're a God that looks beyond our faults and you see our needs, Lord. Father, just keep on blessing us, Lord, as we would want you to do. Be with this service, Lord, the remainder of this service, Lord. We thank you for the music. We thank you, God, for the Spirit. We thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit that's in this place. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father God, I just ask you, Lord, to be with each and every one of us at this time, Lord. Strengthen us and guide us, Lord, in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. I now call on Brother Kyle Frazier for the reading of the scripture. Scripture on 
the, on the board so everybody can see it. Uh, I'm glad you guys are having a good afternoon so far. I know the music has been beautiful. We were praising the Lord. The most high, as best as we can. That's all we can do. That's all he gives us the strength to do, the Lord. So, let's just give us a moment.
things he's done. This is certainly the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I want to say good afternoon to each and every one of you. Amen. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say celebrate. Come on, somebody say celebrate. Let's have a good time, y'all. Now, as we get ready to go into this, I do want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here with each and every one of you. If you hear that little thing in the background, that's just the service trying to catch up to where we are right now. But I want to thank you for your presence in this house and really thank you for the awesome honor. I knew that back in the day, whenever we met the first time, that somehow I'd be amongst you all. And it is certainly a pleasure. And I want to say on the front end, get ready. I've already told Mike and others, y'all better get ready to come down to North Carolina again. And we also got to bring North Carolina to y'all, so we're looking forward to it. Now, this morning, can I get comfortable? Yeah. This morning, when it, the sermon was preached, do you know that the brother who preached preached from the same text that I was going to pull? 1 Corinthians 13, and I mean, man, stir me up. Now, that ain't, I ain't hating because God confirms, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so maybe next time I come to Canada, I'll preach what I was going to preach, love overboard. But we'll say that. But today I want to preach from the backup sermon, because every preacher knows you got to have a backup. And the backup was really the one that I was ready for anyway. <laughs> but you got to go turn up with me today. And you know what turn up means? Yeah. Turn up means that you got to bring your energy. Yeah. you got to learn how to worship God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So this evening is all about making sure that we see God high and lifted up, because as good as y'all look, I didn't come to see how good y'all look. I came to see God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't trying to get no attitude. But I didn't come to see you. I came to see the Lord. Amen. So as we stand to our feet, I want to offer the scripture. I want to offer the scripture. The one scripture that we'll pull from is my favorite scripture in the entire Bible. Young people, I want to encourage you to memorize the scripture. I want you to screenshot it. Maybe put it on the lock screen of your phone. Because it is not just an art piece, it's a way of life. A scripture that I want to pull from today is Ephesians 3.20. And it simply says, and you are familiar, Now unto him that is able to do, exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask a thing, according to the power that worketh within us. You may be seated. God, this evening, here in this beautiful, this beautiful province, I ask that you have your way. Use me for your glory. God, remove Donnie so that people may not see or hear me, but God, they will only see and hear you. God, this is all about you, so God, have your way in this house with this your people. See your name, we pray. Everyone say amen. amen. To all the pastors, to all of the preachers, to the deacons, to the moderator, to this outstanding Council to Micah, who is such a tremendous leader, to Adam, who has been such a pleasant host this week, to everyone that I've met in between, I'll say more later, to God be the glory. I want to begin with a story. And the story talks about a young boy who had a chronic stuttering problem. He stuttered so badly that every time he stuttered, everybody would laugh at him. He was sitting in the classroom. And every time he got ready to read, when the teachers would go around and ask people to read, it was his turn to read. Everybody would begin to laugh, and this boy cried, and he prayed to God that, God, please, take me out of this world because I hate the world that I exist in. This boy would cry so badly, he was really smart, he was really talented, but he couldn't speak. And one day he got off the bus, and he went and sat at the kitchen table beside his parents. And while his sister was able to go upstairs and play games, his parents held him back. And his parents asked the little boy, to write on a piece of paper the sentence that was on the top of the paper. And the little boy thought, I just got out of school, what am I being punished for? And the sentence at the top of the paper said four words, I will not stutter. And his daddy asked him to write it over and over and over again until the paper was filled. The little boy had wrote until his hand got tired. It was bright outside and now it was dark. And he finally finished filling up the paper with that sentence. And all of a sudden, his daddy looked at him and asked him to do something. He said, son, now I want you to read it. The little boy began to cry because he knew that he couldn't read the words. 
Even though it was four words, he couldn't get it out of his mouth. Every time he tried to say, ah, he's got, ah, he got stuck. And tears began to roll down his face. And he would say with his actions that he couldn't, but his mama and his daddy with tears rolling down their face said, you can. And he looked at them and they said, keep going, keep going. And every time he got ready to quit, they said, keep going. And all of a sudden, for the first time in his life, the little boy in the third grader looked at his parents and yelled out in frustration and anger, I will not stop. And all of a sudden, he held his mouth because that's the first time he said anything without stuff. And his mama said, say it again. He said, I will not stutter. His daddy said, say it again. He said, I will not stutter. And that little boy stands up in front of you today in Canada as a young man who can say his own name. And I will tell you that God is able to do
Now, someone ought to do me a favor. Sometimes you got to understand that when God is working through you, in you, and around you, there is not a devil in hell that can stop you. All of the haters in the world can have a convention and try to stop your blessing, but they won't be able to halt the windows of heaven from being opened up. Now, someone in here ought to press the rewind button and think about where God has brought you from in just the last few years. After some of the things that you've been through in your life, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, I dare you to tell me where you would be. Now, I know some of y'all looking good right now. You got your hair fried, dyed, and laid to the side. You got, you got your nice suits on. You look good. But can you remember a time that you weren't where were you right now? You went through some stuff in your life. And, and you know what I, what, I, what I realized, Brother Pastor, is that many times in life, people get spiritual amnesia. You forget what God has done for you. So you come in church and you sit down on your blessed assurance, not realizing that God made a way. My question to you is this. If God made a way for you, if God turned it around for you, you ought not need nobody to pump you up, prime you up. You ought to stand up and give God praise. Because God is a great maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Somebody shout, he's a light in the darkness. And if God truly did something for you, you ought to say hallelujah right now. If I don't want to sit down. But it bothers me how some people come in here like God owed them something. Like God, I showed up. I did you a faith. Somebody say the devil is alive. Even if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank him enough. We ain't done God another thing. And check this. If God don't do another thing, he's already done. His favor has opened up doors for me that will shut up in my face. God's favor sit me down at tables that I shouldn't have been sitting there. I'm 39 years old and I look like a mixture between Shaquille O'Neal and Johnny Gill. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. But I'll tell you something. I know that God made a way for me. And while people were trying to figure it out, somebody said God was working it out. In my 39 years of life, God blessed me. Watch this. God blessed me at 29 years old to run for an office in a county that's predominantly of the other party. <laughs> predominantly of the other party. And I stood up as a young man and I became the youngest elected official in the history of my county. Watch this. By a vast majority vote. Now let me tell you something. That right there has nothing to do with me but it has everything to do with the power of God. My question to you is this, what have you been praying for? What have you been asking God for? And, and let me give you a newsflash. It's not just the young people who are in crisis. Y'all ready for this? Can we teach this for a second? Because, check this, if the church doesn't have them, the church is not here tomorrow. Because how many people know it's not a young people endangerment, it's a church endangerment. And somebody ought to say the church is in trouble if we don't focus on the power of God. Because I got news for you, God is a turnaround God. And the same folk who don't think it can be done will be looking at you when it's already done tomorrow. Let me get to the scripture when we look at Ephesians 3. We see in verse 20 the culmination of the prayer written by the apostle Paul. He is exalting God and giving him all the glory. He's praising him and seeing God in the fullness of his majesty. Paul looks at God and he realizes that God can't be fully explained and he realizes that God should be fully appreciated. So I'm going to give y'all three points like we do in North Carolina and I'm going to sit on that. The first thing I want to tell you to today as we look at the scripture, as you recognize of, of Ephesians 3.20, the first thing I want you to know is the substance of this prayer. Somebody shout substance. substance. The first part of the scripture, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him who is able. All right. Paul starts the verse out by acknowledging who he is speaking to. It never bothers me anything more when folk can't respect people. Go ahead. Know who you're talking to. I didn't run up in there my mama saying, What's up, sis? But go give me something. No, no, no. That's mama. That's mama. Mama, ma'am. I just cleaned my room. I've done what I'm supposed to do. Mama, can you give me something so 
probably go to the movies. She probably still said no, but I made sure to show respect. <laughs> and know this, whenever you speak to somebody, you ought to show respect. So, so Paul says, before I get to anything else, I must identify the subject of my statement. And he says, I'm going to identify God by saying who he is. The foundation of what is to be laid here by Paul's calling of God is his identification of God. And from these six words, we see, watch this, that Paul believes that God is the very substance of everything he needs. What I find particularly impactful is that the apostle Paul does not identify him by name. He identifies him by his essence. Y'all missed that right there. He identified him not by his name, but he identified him by his nature. He's praying to him, but he is speaking to God is very strategically. He doesn't say now unto God. He says now unto him who is able. Now this is powerful because the first word is now, meaning that the writer understands that God is present in the moment with him. I like when the scripture reminds us that God is a very present help in a time of trouble. And I love how the older saints used to sing this song. Right now, Lord, right now, Lord, my soul needs a blessing. Right now, Lord. But, but watch the strategic call. Young people, Paul does not call him by his name. He calls him by his character. He says, now unto him is able. And this denotes that he has a relationship with God. That he has no doubts about the power of God, and by calling God the one who is able, he has conveyed to God that he trusts and depends on him. I wonder here in this beautiful facility that's been renovated, that is brand spanking new, if there is anybody who feels like Paul on this afternoon, and you can acknowledge that God is able. You can acknowledge that God is able not because of what you heard, but what you know. Because there's been ways that God has made for you. How many people are trusting God in here? Trusting him to be the substance of everything you need. Is he a substance? Do you believe that he is able? Paul knew that God was able. And he needed God to do some things and he spoke to him like he knew he was able. Somebody all in here to encourage yourself right now by, by reminding yourself that you serve a God who is able. Speak to your situation right now and open your mouth and say, God, I know you're able. God, I know that you're able. And when you trust God to be a substance, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how it looks. What it matters is this. You know that you serve a mind-blowing God. Let me give you a story. Quick story, young people. The story is told about an old lady who lived up in West Virginia. And if you know the terrain of West Virginia, watch this. It's a struggle because it's very mountainous. This older woman was an older woman who was up in her 80s at this time. And it was a struggle to get down to church because she was on top of the mountain while the church sat down in the valley. Pastor preached a sermon from this very scripture that I'm preaching from today. And the old lady sat in the church that morning and she caught the sermon. And then she said this, she said, I know one thing, I'm going to start praying for a miracle. And this, this older woman told everybody who would listen, that God is going to move this mountain. The people thought the woman was crazy. She said it all the time. They said, Pastor didn't mean it literally. He meant it figuratively. But she said, no, no, no. I know that God's going to move this mountain. He's going to make it easier for me to get where I need to be. Kids talked to her. Her own children, they thought she was going crazy. And the kids even sent Pastor to preach to her. Pastor, you got to go talk to her. She took your word literally. Go break it down to her. Let her know that you were just speaking in general. Pastor drove all the way up the mountain, and then he told her that, you know, when I preach the sermon, I don't want you to get caught up in those things. God can do it, but, but he might not. And she looked at him, and she said, Pastor, I respect you. You're a good preacher. But she grabbed him by his hand. She said, baby, I just need to tell you that God going to move this mountain. <laughs> the old lady was sitting in a house one day, and all of a sudden, outside of a window, she heard some rumbling. And the rumbling outside of a window, she walked out, and before she walked out, she grabbed a peacemaker. You know how they do down in the South. They grab their peacemaker. And you don't know what that is. She grabbed a little weapon so that she made sure. <laughs> this old lady went outside and she looked around the terrain and all these men were on her property. These men were wearing hard hats. And they had these long lenses that they were looking through. And then the man as she was coming out wondering what's going on and asking questions what's going on, the man said, ma'am, I'm sorry that we didn't inform you. And she said, didn't inform me of what? I'm trying to figure out what you're doing on my property. This man says to the older woman, ma'am, we are with the state road 
Commission. And we are getting ready to put some dynamite up in these hills. And we are about to move this mountain to bring a road through. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you is this. Folk can look at you like you're crazy. Folk can tell you that it ain't gonna happen. But when you believe in the God who is the substance of your prayer, God will be able to move mountains in your life. Does anybody know God to be a mountain moving God? Does anybody know God can turn it around in your situation? God can turn around your health situation. God can turn around your wealth situation. But you gotta know that he is the substance of your prayer. The next thing I want you to know is this. He's the substance, but he's also the superiority. Notice the superiority of the prayer because he says to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask to think. Let me teach this. Paul notices this. He says that I'm going to acknowledge the what also after acknowledging the who. Since we see that it's him who is able, now let's look at what God can do. This is where Paul realizes that God is a God that is truly mind-blowing in the sense that God's ability is superior to what his mind can even fathom. He is able to do more than we can even ask or think. And you know what I what I realized? Some of us have more faith in people than we do in God. If you don't believe me, think about this. We try to dress to appease people. We try to walk to appease people. We try to talk to appease people. And I wonder, when are we going to start walking, talking, and living to appease God? Because it's he who has made us and not we ourselves. You know what I've learned? I don't care if they don't like what I'm wearing. They didn't buy it, baby, so I'm going to rock it anyway. I don't care if they don't like the way I talk. They didn't teach me, so I'm going to talk it anyway. Somebody say, God did it, so I'm going to honor him. So as we look at this, it says, now the him is able to do more than I can even ask to think. This is truly mind-blowing because we live in an age where people try to put God in a box. They say, God can't do this. God won't do that. that the devil is alive. Listen to this. God is sovereign. And he can do what he wants, when he wants, through whomever he wants to do it to. Came to remind you here today that there is nothing that God can't do. And what's even more amazing is that God's power is superior to our wildest dream. As we look here in the text, one thing that I want you to know is that God is bigger than your problems. And never have I seen the likes, Brother Pastor, of the church being filled with more fearful people. It ain't nothing like a scared Christian. Think about this for a second. You serve the God who made heaven and earth, and you're walking around scurred. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Why are we fearful? Brother Adam, I don't understand how we can be fearful when we serve a mind-blowing God. And you know what I've learned? Whenever we're fearful, we don't realize the superiority. We don't know that God is in control of the situation. It ain't a room that you can walk in that when God goes before you that they don't got to back down and do what God says. God is superior to whatever you're facing. And I don't care what it is, the devil wants to trick you into believing that whenever you stand up for God that it's embarrassing. The devil is a lie. I won't. Check this out. I can watch a football game and go slam crazy over the 49ers. And some of y'all can watch it and go crazy over the Cowboys. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that. Them jokers ain't want to, I think last time Abraham Lincoln was in office when they won. <laughs> but how can you cheer on a football team, cheer on a basketball team, and come to church and sit down on your phone? When it was God that turned it around, I need a few brothers in the room who can turn up on your team and say,
tell you is this. Don't let the devil trick you. I hear brothers say, that ain't my style. That ain't your style. You sitting up there throwing your popcorn in the air over a game. But it ain't your style to say hallelujah to the, to the God that brought you out. Listen to me closely. When I say this, know this. Know this from the bottom of my heart. I've seen God turn my community around when men started praising. One Sunday, there was an old deacon that ran around the church. I said, good Lord, where did that come from? This brother was not the brother to run. He wasn't even the one to stand up. But this brother began to run. And he ran around the perimeter of the sanctuary seven times. And they asked him, why was you running? He said, there's some walls that got to fall. And I said, they said, what you mean? He said, some walls got to fall because the walls are up and the people can't come in to the walls fall. Y'all missed that. We praying for folk to come in and we got walls up. But God won't make the walls fall down till we realize who he is. And, and when we think about the superiority, y'all sit down. When you think about the superiority of God, I got to tell you a quick story. When I was younger, I wasn't as big as I am now, about 256 too. Big gut on me, you know, I'm out of shape now. But back then, I was real skinny, strong, and every day in my neighborhood, this boy would beat me up, he beat the mess out of me. Just smack the back of my head, I got a fresh fade. You know how it is when you get a fresh fade? Brothers know what I'm talking about too. And I used to get that high fade, that, that real, not no temp fade, I'm talking about that high ball fade. And he would smack my head as hard as he could. Sound like firecrackers went off. Every time I'd see him, he beat me up on the bus, beat me up home. I tried to ride the bike by real fast. He just beat me up. He was bigger, stronger, faster, everything to me. And one day I decided, Sister Ravy, that I was going to beat this joke up. I said, you know what? I'm tired of it. I'm going to go tell him, you're going to keep your hands off of me. I don't know what got into me that day. But as I was walking around with my little walkman, you know the walkman, y'all old people know the walkman. Y'all kids got AirPods now. Had my Walkman in my pocket. I was listening to Nuck If You Book, boy. I was crying. I was walking. They probably thought I was crazy walking through the neighborhood like that. But I was nucking and bucking and all that stuff. And I was getting ready to go over and I was going to tell him, you ain't going to put your hands on me anymore. And ladies and gentlemen, when I got to his house like clockwork, he was standing right there my head back, my headphones off, and I looked at him, and I swallowed. <laughs> I looked at him, and I said, I'm tired of you beating me up. I'm sick of you beating me up, and if you keep on, I'm going to have to do something about it. And all of a sudden, this boy had been beating me up for a long time. He looked at me, and he said, okay. And I don't know what that did. That gave me a boast of confidence right there. I said, yeah, that's right. And if you do it again, I'm going to have to put hands on you. You understand what I'm saying? He said, yeah, yeah, I understand. I said, you hear me? He said, yeah, I hear you. I said, don't you do it. I was getting crunk. Because this joker, he, he didn't even say nothing to me before. He just don't beat me up. But now he was scared. And I started backing up like I did there. Young people, I was feeling myself. I done, I done stood in front of my bully. And I done backed him down. And as I got ready to turn around and go home, get ready to put my headphones up because I didn't need to fight. He already knew what it was. I turned around and I noticed that my daddy was behind me. <laughs> the whole time I was talking, I didn't know daddy was behind me. Daddy was behind my back and I was sitting there laying off and the bully he wasn't afraid of me. <laughs> but he was afraid of my daddy. What you saying, brother preacher? I'm saying that whenever you get into a struggle, whenever you get into a situation where the enemy thinks he's got you cornered, what I'm trying to tell you here is that God has your back. And that when God has your back,
even the biggest demons gotta back down to you. It's like somebody high five and say, God got my back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we, we hear about we hear about the substance. We hear about the superiority, but but I gotta go back to North Carolina when I tell you this. Somebody shout the source. Ah, somebody shout the source. Because he says, according to the power that worketh in me. Y'all know how we do down south. Paul then switches to focus the prayer from the mind-blowing God that he's been talking about. And he switches it to us as believers. I got a question for you here up in beautiful Nova Scotia. Do you believe in the power, the power of God? Yeah. Now, now y'all didn't hear me, y'all didn't hear me. Do you believe? So, so, 
phase of blessings in your life that God is going to unleash on you was dependent upon the praise you give him right now. Yeah. Uh, y'all, y'all missed that right there. I'm getting ready to go to my seat. I, I, I said, what is the next level of blessings on your life? What's dependent upon the praise that you give God right now? Now, now some of y'all, some of y'all looking like it don't take all that. And you're right, it may not take all that for you, but it take all that in a bag of chips for me. God for a 
for praise to shake the rafters not of this church, but to shake the rafters of Canada.
young people, if you can't come up, men, come up, everybody who can. There's, you want to stand in the gap for somebody who's sick, somebody who's going through a struggle. Come on down. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. Lift those hands. Do you believe it? See, there is power in the name of Jesus. What will it do, y'all? To break every, break every chain.
in Jesus' name. On behalf of the executive, it gives me great honor and pleasure to thank um, Pastor Donnie. You know, we, we've been trying for quite a few years to get him up here, and the pandemic happened, and we had the option to do virtual, and we was like, no, that's not, that's not it. It'll happen when it's supposed to happen. I believe that this, this day was ordained just for us. There has been an awakening. We were down. We were out. We had some, some leaders and some people who we trust within the church step up yesterday and, and show that they want to support us because, truth be told, we are in danger. Yeah. Within the next two years after this executive, what's going to happen? Will there be a provincial youth body? And then once that's gone, and all of us are gone, what happens to the AEBA? We need growth, we need change, and we need support. We've been here, leaning on each other, all of these years, and the numbers are going down, down, down. When I joined BYF, I didn't have a choice but to go. At St. Thomas, we were made to go in the junior choir, where there was leadership, there was discipline, I mean, well, if you didn't stand up on time, sit down, during the service, we're gonna do that again, and be on one accord. And that's an issue, we don't wanna be on one accord, everybody wants to go and take ways and means of their own, and then there's too many cooks in the kitchen and nothing gets done. So we wanna invite all of you, if you are going to support us, and be dedicated to the work, please do. Because we don't want to have you said that in two years, or four years, or ten years, that this organization does not exist. But I feel like some of those chains and those walls have broken down today because of the word. We thank God for his manservant, Pastor Donnie. Thank you for being obedient. You know, the past three years, next year will be our last, but we've been focusing on being bold. For Christ. We started off with this theme and then we, we sort of broke down the word. How do we do that? If, if we're not bold, nobody else is going to want to come in. So we have to show what we know. And so we started off with believing God. If you don't believe Him, how do you go on? I, when you believe Him, you must obey His commandments. And one of those commandments is to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So that's where we are. So next year, we are going to decree and declare that we are bold. So in order to get to that point, we got a lot of work to do within the next 365 days. And it's going to take more than the, the executive that you saw standing here. We're going to need all of the churches, the pastors, the licentiates, the deacons. Everybody going to have to rally around us. The church mothers, we need it. If you never listened to me before, in all these years that I've been saying we in a state of emergency, please listen to me. We in a state of emergency. It's not a joke. We have to do better. So Pastor Donnie, thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming and for blessing us. And we look forward to getting back to North Carolina. Uh, and to New Horizons, I'm going to ask... Um, Pastor Grace, you can come and accept this on behalf of the church. Thank you for being such great host. Um, we, two years ago, we, we decided the churches we would go to for the next two years. And at the time, they were going through renovations, but they stepped out on faith and they said, by 2023, we'll be back in the building and we will be hosting and here we are. So thank you guys so much. Churches for the next few years, it shouldn't be a struggle. Okay. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you to the instrument players, Rini, Lord of the B Calvin, 
Thank you for coming and supporting St. Thomas UIF and for supporting us Friday night at the concert. You guys have just been um, with us through our virtual conferences. Reedy put the videos together and we got into the church and the instrument players came and, and they've just been awesome. We want to thank Jesse, uh, Jesse the Messenger for coming and blessing us on Friday and always being there with the word of encouragement. Uh, David, our moderator, phone call away, text message, sometimes that causes, I apologize. Um, but thank you for always answering. Um, you know, all of our youth advisors, we really appreciate you guys and the work that you do for us. There's a few of you, but the work does not go unnoticed. So thank you all. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Um, if I forgot anybody, I'm sorry. Charity to my name.
did worship with abandon. Praise God. Thank you. Please stand for the benediction. I won't say any more. Enough has been said. God has been so good today. Bless you. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Just lift your voice and say, Amen. Amen. 